Uh, my name's Karen Davis. Those of you who don't know me, um, I'm the communications director and or the publications director, depending on the day of the week. Um, but I'm also your MC for the evening. So I wanted to welcome everyone and share just a little bit of news before we get started with Carol's evaluation. We have new business cards. And if you come in person for the meeting, you can have some. Um, but since we changed location and we've been Zooming and we updated our vision and um, our mission statement, we decided we needed some new business cards. So there are several on the table. Feel free to take as many as you'd like, pass them out to your friends, because on the back of the cards, there's a place you can put your name and um, your contact information, your choice, whether it's an email or if you feel comfortable giving out your phone number, if you meet someone and want to invite them to come to the club. So remember, word of mouth is probably the, the best way we can grow our club. So be proud and share those business cards with folks. Um, just a, another reminder, read your newsletter. There's lots of news in there. Um, there's lots of news on the website. Terry couldn't be with us tonight. He's our webmaster and he keeps that all up to date including all the pictures that were turned in for the evaluation tonight. Um, he'll have those up in a gallery on our website. So if, uh, if you want to go check those later on, you can do that. Um, any announcements from any of our board members who might be here, either here or on Zoom? Anything I might have missed? Okay. I, think, I think everything's in the newsletter. You did a great job, Karen. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. Yes, and thanks to um, Philip Snyder. I think Philip is out there in, in the Zoom world uh, for our cover photo this time. It was a really cool photo of um, uh, the, the nighttime sky. Uh, great job on that. So, um, all right, and then we wanted to also thank, for again, those of you who are on Zoom, you don't get any of the great, is it lemon poppy seed cake that we, bread that we have tonight? Poppy seed, it's very good. Mm -hmm. Penny Howler, thank you again to Penny, one of our newer members, who is our baker. And I think I understand it was Penny's husband who did the baking this time. So yes, thank you to Penny's husband for um, our goodies tonight. Um, but we're excited. This is our fifth image evaluation of the year. We have six each year. I think I heard Marianne talking a little bit about this earlier. Um, but each member is allowed to enter two uh, images. Tonight is not an assigned subject. So that means your two images can be whatever you would like them to be. And then our new evaluator, uh, we haven't had Carol Davis before, but she's joining us tonight from, I believe I heard Marilyn. Carol, are you, do you live yep. in Maryland? I do. Okay. All right. So she is joining us virtually tonight to evaluate our digital images. So in this situation, we're still kind of in recovery mode from COVID. So when we set up a lot of these, um, we were still being really cautious about things. So we didn't have um, as many in-person people as we would have liked. But um, Carol's bringing a lot of expertise for us. So let me just quickly read her bio. And I love the first sentence. Um, a joyologist at heart, Carol Davis enjoys sharing her knowledge and experience with photography and the arts. Maybe Carol will explain a little bit more what she means by joyologist. Um, starting with film and darkroom development in high school, then a career in graphic design, owning a successful sign business, while progressing and learning the new digital technology of large format printing, her time behind the camera and the world of photography and art now expand, expands over 40 years. Uh, multifaceted, Carol's interests and talents are many. An avid writer, mixed media artist, flower framer, extraordinaire, uh, white dove wrangler, and community volunteer wrapped all in one. The love of her life, Tom, often describes her as expanding foam. I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> her love of life and the art of embracing your journey is also shared through her podcast with the same name. Um, Carol and her husband, Tom, have a local portrait studio, Carol Davis Photography. It's called Your Journey, uh, Your Journey Studios. So uh, we are really happy to have Carol with us tonight. She is a PSA member and um, I think master photographer with the Photographic Society of America. So I'm gonna turn it over to her. She actually has all of our images. She's going to share the image. And uh, Michael, I believe is gonna give us the title so we can visualize what that image is uh, intended to be by the maker. And Carol will give us her feedback. I think she's showing it in Lightroom. So she may actually do a little demo on some of the edits that she's suggesting. And then Michael will announce the, um, the maker of the photographer once Carol finishes her critique. 
So Michael, how many images tonight? 80. We have 80 images. So we're gonna, we're gonna roll and let Carol do her thing. So again, thanks Carol for joining us and uh, we're gonna turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much for having me and for Susan for suggesting that I be here. Uh, I guess the, the format will be, we'll just go ahead and start sharing the screen and, and go from there. Is that what we, what we wanna do? That sounds good, yeah. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. And then are you going to uh, announce the title first uh, before I, I? I can, or you can do it either, whichever you prefer. Uh, well, let me share my screen. Okay, so okay. I'll let you announce the title. All right, the title of this one is 4501. Okay, so on initial impact, which is one of the 12, um, 12 items that we're looking for for a merit image, it's definitely impactful. I see the title right away. Uh, what I also see going straight into it is right here in the, the center. If you have the capability, and this is obviously directed to the maker, if you have the capability to clean this up, I would clean this, this area up in your image. Uh, right in here, I would clean that up a little bit as well. Um, one of the things that really stands out are your lighter, brighter areas in a photo. Uh, so if there's any way that you could tone that down maybe just a little, uh, that would be one of my thoughts. Okay, and so after I give you your my comments, then you have something else you wanted to add to it? Uh, just the, the photographer who took the shot. Okay. So that's Susan Van Manen. The next image is another brick in the wall. Okay. I love the impact when you initially uh, look at it. I feel like you could have a little more contrast in it. One of the things with lines is that you wanna make sure that your perspective and your level is even. So the first thing that I would do is go to my, my crop here and you can see, and I wish I could, you could see me pointing to it, but the, the window on the left, you see where it's down a little in comparison to the one on the right. So just by taking it, and tipping it just a little bit, it makes it a little more even. Then of course you look down at the bottom and you see where it's off just a little bit as well. So you wanna find that happy medium <clears throat> between the two. Uh, the contrast on it, I would up the contrast just a little bit to get a little bit more uh, depth in the, the concrete right here. When you bring that contrast up, you see it a little bit more so. And sometimes when you bring those highlights down, that'll do the same for you. I'd be careful of this area right here, even though they aren't uh, clone marks, they could be seen as clone marks. So you may wanna go in and just clean a little bit of that area up, okay? Susan Jethro Reed, okay. Backlight Baby. Oh, wow. This is so much fun. I absolutely love this image and to be able to get this close, uh, even with a, a nice lens and to get the detail in here, I, you know, from a portrait point of view, you'd want him to turn your head, turn his head a little bit so that you can see that other eye. So if you have any others that are in your film strip that, that possibly have that, I may look for that but obviously you have no control in, in what the bird does. And I even like the way that it's not straight across. I like the fact that it has the angle in it. Well done. Cindy Walker, born at Twin Lakes. Ooh, another one. Great detail in the, the shadows up in the mountains. Sometimes that's, you lose that. I don't know if you can pull a little bit more out of this area uh, with just a mask. I would just kind of up it just a little bit. And of course, when you do that with the shadows, when you lift them up, obviously you're losing here. So you don't want to do that on a broad base, uh, but I would certainly take a, um, 
a mask. So if you click here in Lightroom and you just use your brush, then you can come in here and just go in this area in general. And obviously I'm doing it really loosely and quick. And then just bring that shadow area up ever so slightly. I wouldn't do much just so that your blacks are not blocked. Um, I love the, the road here leading. Um, the only other thing that I would maybe try would be to bring it in. And I don't want to force, hang on, let me unlock here. I would just bring it in so that road maybe goes from there. It just, it's, it's seasoned to taste on something like that. Play around with your crops because sometimes that's when you see something completely different. Carol right. Hageman, blacksmith. You can feel the heat coming off of this, that's for sure. And it's obviously a, a natural light shot. I love that you have action in it. At the same time, you may find a judge that is going to tell you, you should have had a higher shutter speed. So really it's subjective. I would definitely check to make sure that, that your level here again, um, I like it. I'm just looking at all of your details here. You're definitely soft in the, the forefront here, which in some cases you may intend that. The importance is the storytelling here. Uh, what was the title again? Blacksmith. I may elaborate on the title a little bit and, and give it more personality because it's kind of a, an obvious thing that it's a blacksmith. So you really want to, to have your storytelling, telling what he's doing like too hot to handle or um, I guess he's, he's forging the point on it. Um, if you know what what the process is, maybe use keywords uh, as far as what he's actually doing. Um, this right here has just caught my eye. And here you have everything else old in the photo. And this looks like a brand new piece of wire here. So if you're able, I would probably take that out. Okay. Kemp Davis born of the surf oh wow again another unique image i'm really liking the black and white i love that your horizon line is is good from a competition point of view they would probably ding you on the fact that it is not as sharp and crisp as they would like it to see and depending on and again it's it appears to be a natural light shot uh, even if you have to up that ISO because it looks like, you know, a storm was coming in, the clouds were billowing, you've definitely got some noise up in your clouds. Uh, something as simple as, as running this through a denoise um, plug-in would probably help that. And the sharpening, sometimes the sharpening can hurt you uh, more than anything else. Um, Let's see, a lot of time, well, and now in Lightroom, we have um, denoise. I'm not sure what this photo format is. It says that it's not compatible with it. Um, probably the fact that it's a JPEG, you can probably use that with your raw files. Um, but one of the things when you're sharpening is you tend to, to block it out in your shadows. So you wanna be careful of when you're doing that. But even just a little bit of sharpening, there's before, I think I had it at like 47 and there's after. There's definitely a difference, especially in the underbelly where you see those hairs and everything. And again, if in sharpening it, it makes it darker, just pull some of those shadows out by using the mask uh, tool. L uh, Lightroom has gotten so powerful here lately. Um, with these last um, last few updates that they've had. Okay. Heidi Nunnally, bring him down. Oh, wow. So I would imagine this is in the reportage category and well done, well thought out. Um, 
nice and sharp right down to the curls in in this guy's hair here um i see really nothing that i would change at this point i would certainly um i'd certainly give it a go with as it sits um good job bill whitworth falling Oh, wow. Another good one. And this was falling? Yes. Okay. Bull falling. What, what's the full title? Bull falling. Bull falling. Okay. And again, right back to the blacksmith, I would say that, that we know a bull is falling. So I think from a storytelling point of view, um, something that that would be more along the lines of something that wasn't so obvious. Um, nothing comes to mind right off the top of my head. Um, other than when I look here, I see he's got his eye here. So mm -hmm. I certainly wouldn't go along the lines of eye on you. Um, but I would, I would look a little deeper into the storytelling of the image versus the obvious title. Again, great capture. Carol Hageman. Buzzing old baldy. Okay, my first thought as I look is it appears as though it's sloping downhill. So let's just take this for the sake of, of checking it and see those roof lines right there. If I lift it up, ever so slightly it lines this is like your point right there when you're first looking at it and you can really see the difference in in where it was and let me hit reset okay so this is where it is now don't pay attention to the lines around the side obviously so i would play with that just a little bit because you have so many different lines so you want to be mindful of where those li those leading lines are leading your eye. And if, if it's sloping downhill a little bit and it's not intended to, that's something that you may want to correct. And what was the title again? Buzzing Old Baldy. Buzzing Old Baldy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Honestly, I don't know what it means. I at first look at the people on the, the beach thinking, are the birds buzzing the baldy on the beach? But they have caps on, so no one is bald. Uh, is the name of the, the building Old Baldy? If it is, the judges won't know that. Uh, so that might be something to consider, is that when, when these images first pop up, they have to tell the story on their own. And the judges have such a short period of time to look at them that they don't have the time to try to figure it out. So it really has to speak for itself. Um, again, a, a title doesn't, doesn't come up immediately other than something to tie maybe the birds in with the people on the beach about um, enjoying a summer day or um, something along those lines. I love the clouds in the sky, though. They're really nice. Nicely done. Karen Davis. Cabin in the flowers. Okay. Zinnias. I love zinnias. As you can see, I have a few behind me. So initially, I feel as though it's the title is, is spot on. Um, I feel as though it's not really standing out that much. So from a strong point, I would probably want to crop it in a little tighter. Let's see what happens if we do that. Again, I don't want to lock it. And I would be mindful of, of the crop. And maybe go. 
along those lines. And I would just bring it in tighter. Again, if you have the capability of taking this out, I don't see where it really adds to your image. If anything, it's just something to distract me away from the cabin. And I would do the same with what appears to be a greenhouse in the back and the stone pillar. Unless they're telling a part of the story, I would take those out. Um, so I, I brought it in from the crop there and that was your original. So from an impact point of view, I think you could bring it in tighter and, and it would tell the story more. Okay. Liz Smith, captured. Again, another great capture. Um, nice and focus. Uh, from a reportage point of view, you're definitely there. Um, just a little concerned about this area back in here. Um, as far as, as what's going on, it almost looks a little pixelated up here. I'm not sure what lens was used. Um, it just looks like you have a lot of artifacts in the background here. So I would just go back and, and double check that from, from that point of view. Um, yeah. Good job. Ling Whitworth. Clovers in ice. Cool shot. Cool shot. Immediately, my eyes are drawn up here. And I'm not, as, as much as this is the focus, my eyes start to wander. So I would look to see what would happen if we brought these highlights down just a bit. So if we bring those highlights down, we're getting more of the detail in that ice. So here's where it was, and I'm gonna take it all the way down. So in particular, look right into this area here. You definitely have more detail there. And I have to wonder if select subject would work on this. Let's see how good this mask works. Oh, pretty good. So you could actually come in here and you could add to this with a brush. Let's just add up in here. I'm just going to be real sloppy with it. Obviously, you would take more time. Then I, what that does is in selecting the subject, I can now come up here and invert the mask so that now I'm working on the background. I could have selected background, but I wasn't sure how good of a job it was going to do. So you can always play with that. But when you, do, when you deepen that background, look how they pop off the screen. And again, editing is personal preference and personal choice. I'm only showing you the way that, that I would want to do it just to bring out those, um, what are they, onion heads again? Clover. What's the title again? Clovers in Ice. Clovers in Ice. I may consider a different title with that as well, because again, you're, you're stating the obvious. So um it's a it's a frozen in time um or uh let's see clover i like to do to sometimes do a play on words when i'm um when i'm coming up with titles um just suggestions just something to think about as far as um I would possibly put that word frozen in or pull out the thesaurus and come up with other, other ways to say frozen. Um, but that's, um, that's with my edits on it. I'm gonna hit reset so that you can see the difference. So it, in my opinion, it brings those clovers more, um, more 3D, more off the page um, for you. Okay. Carol Annis, color changing squid. Wow, he's amazing. I wouldn't change a thing. 
This is beautiful. Harold Lana. No. Oh, you're fine. Delicate. So I'm initially drawn right here. And I think the part that bothers me the most is that this is in focus. This is in focus. And yet these are not. If you were to paint this, it would probably correct a lot of, of that. Um, I would go through it or through, through your film roll again to see um, what else you may possibly have along this series. And you may even be able to have this one in focus and this in focus and lay them on top of each other in Photoshop and mask out. And then you would have a, a complete mm -hmm. um, in focus. And of course, down here, this is really nice and sharp. And again, we go back to here. So I think your your depth of field on this one is probably mm -hmm. something that would would catch you up or trip you um, to possibly with a, a wider or a more um, narrow depth of field, um, more on the F-16 side of things um, may have, have been a little bit um, more clear for you in this one. I love the lighting. It's beautiful. Tony Johnson, Desert Moonlight. This image moves. I don't know if ever if everyone else can can see it the way that I see it, but there is definitely a vibration to this image, which is is amazing. Um, I've seen images like this in in real life uh, going through uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm not sure where you are here. They call it big sky out there. Um, the part that I would be concerned about as far as the judges go when they're looking at that is you want to make sure that you've got depth up in in these shadows here. So again, if I were to pull out a brush mask and just mask into this area just a little bit, and let's make this a little smaller here. Maybe up in there. And let's just go into the shadows. And now all of a sudden we can see those shadows and they're not blocked out. So this is this is my edit. Get off of here. And I'm going to hit reset now so that you can see the difference. I wish I could do the before and after. But I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know if I could do. I'm not going to get into that. I could I could sit here and play with with this all the time. Okay, good job. I love it. And like I say, it it vibrates. I don't know if it's the 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 sky. It's like the sky is rotating, um, just like Earth does. So I love it. Jay Denny, Desperado. Wow. All of you that are able to get these photos close up, I'm always wondering what kind of lens do you have? Because I don't have a lens that I can get that close. Wow, he's so majestic. I would be a little cautious on the amount of noise that you have here. And you could very easily get a judge that is... Um, concerned and upset that this is brown and yellow where it should be white. And I know the sun's coming through the back and, and you have that. Um, they are definitely going to ding you on uh, lack of detail in your white spots here where they're blown out. And the same as far as the yellow here or the brown. Uh, also, you have blue up here in the wing of the uh, of the eagle and typically eagles don't have blue uh, there's blue there and there's some blue artifacts up in here so i would just be cautious and mindful of that 
Uh, if you have the capability where you can go in and do a little touch up work there, um, I would definitely recommend looking at those areas for improvement. Okay. Susan Jathro Reed, Downtown RVA. Downtown RVA? RVA is the local abbreviation for Richmond. Okay. All right. And again, if that's fine, if, if you have judges that are within your, your local area, but obviously I didn't know where it was. And again, from the storytelling point of view, you want to make sure that that story, sometimes your story will completely put you in the 79 category. Club 79, uh, we're all familiar with Club 79. Uh, and it's so frustrating because something so simple as the title um, can really make a difference for you there. Um, I love the, the image. I think um, from a title point of view, uh, you would definitely want to come up with something that's a little more nostalgic, um, something that will give you a little more storytelling. I'd be careful of this vignetting that's up in the corner, uh, just because uh, I've been dinged many times on on the vignetting. Um, it's just it's an it's an easy fix. Um, let's see if I can go here. Um, vignetting in Lightroom is right here, so it's going to be in effects. And you can bring it oh, other way. You can bring it backwards just a bit. And it takes that right out. Now, the downside on that is it's adding a white vignette over here in the corner. So this is where you may want to just take that brush mask and just lighten it. You can just pull it out of the corners there just a little bit. So I'm, I'm still using a little bit of it. And then again, just come up here to your mask tool, use your brush swipe up in that corner and just play with your sliders. And I think it'll give you um, give you a difference. Okay, good job. Penny Haller, Emmanuel. Mm. Nice detail in the black and white. I love how his gaze brings you right in and one of the things that's often looked at is the whites of the eyes on the bottom here. Um, I want him to pick it up and, and start playing it. It looks like it might be tilted just a little bit. Let's just see. And of course, one of the things that you have to be careful of with that is that when you tilt it, Obviously, you're you're bringing him um, closer to the top. Um, that's where I would recommend if you want to change the tilt on it, that you do it in Photoshop, because Photoshop has the little checkbox where it can content fill aware, and so all of this area right here it would take care of for you, and then you would even because that's one of the limitations in in Lightroom is that you can't go outside of the the size of your image. Um, you could certainly give him a little bit more headroom there, and it would fill in the blank of the wall. Um, and I would make sure that you had just a little bit more around the the shoe area as well. Good job, Joe Ring, Edinger Falls, Nova Scotia. That's really pretty. I have to wonder how far you had to hike to get to it. Just noticing your light rays over here in the corner. Um, again, when you have things that are a distraction in your image, it might be something that if, you, if you're able to, you may want to take them out, just like your little branch right here. Overall, I love it. Good job. Martin Evans, eye contact. 
<laughs> I love the title. I love that you're able to get up close and oh my goodness, two red tail hawks. Um, I have to wonder, are you a falconer and, and are you able to have them there um, for them to, to be so comfortable to come up into a bird feeder? Um, again, as with, with some of the others, I feel like we're going uphill here. And so I would, I would just be really cautious of that, making sure that, that it's in the direction that it needs to be. And again, when you're dealing with, um, with animals, uh, sometimes you have to take what you get. What was the title again? Eye contact. Eye contact. So I like eye contact because they certainly have eye contact. First thing that came to my mind was say what? Or you said what? Just to, to give that personality um, to the, the subject itself is sometimes uh, something that's really important because then it engages the judges and you'll hear them laugh. And, and if you've contacted with them in that way, uh, your, your chance of a, of a higher score can go up as well because you're hitting those, um, those marks of impact. Okay. Sarah. Fading mythic. Fading. 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 Fading mythic. Fading away. Mm -hmm. This is um, one of the things that my husband loves are what he calls her ghost signs. And if you do a search, there's a, they're actually a thing. And they're the signs on the, the, uh, the side of the building um, that are fading away. Uh, not everyone would necessarily know that, though. So I think it's important uh, that the maker did use the, the term fading. Mm -hmm. um, I like the black and white, and yet I'm curious what the color version would look like. And one of the things that you might want to just play around with and try is the, um, the contrast in this image. If you looked at it from a, a black and white point of view versus um, the color. So let's see, all right. So here's your regular contrast. And then if I bring that contrast down, it may, in my opinion, give it more of that fading, that fading look. It's always fun to play with the sliders. Okay. Penny Holler. Form and firmament. I love the leading lines on the side with the road that's pulling you in. I'm a little concerned with this right here with the block shadows. Did you submit anything? I would probably lift your shadows just a little bit on this, but overall, it's a very welcoming, warm image. I like it. Michael Orr. Farmstead. Boy, these old buildings really make you wonder if the walls could talk. What would they tell you? And perhaps that may be a title as well for this or something in relation to the cow. I'm just thinking out loud. This image is intriguing for me because um, in my mind, I wanna know more of the story. I wanna know 
why is the cow there versus, or why is he alone? Um, cool image. And the the tire tracks, I still feel the need to want to crop it in a little tighter though. Let's see what happens when we do that. Boy, that changes the whole thing because now he can't cross without going through the stream. So that could give you a whole different title as well. I like it. I'm curious about the building. Okay. Matt Davis, fill her up. <laughs> well, I got there just in time to hear the okay. I think your your highlights, I mean your overall impact is awesome. Um, I love old gas stations. Um, you have for, as far as the the uh, storytelling part goes, you have a no trespassing sign here. Um, so that could lend itself to another title. Um, again, you're drawn to the, the brightest part of the image. So you may want to, to be mindful of that. And let's just see what happens if we mask off. Let me make this larger. We just mask off the gas tank. And let's invert the mask. So now we have the background selected primarily. What happens if we bring some of these highlights down? And then let's duplicate the mask. So now we just have the gas pump again. And let's bring the exposure up just a little bit on that. Let's bring the contrast up. And if able, I would take this out. So sometimes this works well and sometimes it doesn't. So this is a good one to play with. So I'm using the, um, the heel tool. I believe it's set on heel. And I can't see where it went. Oh, there it is. Sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it doesn't. And of course I needed to um, paint it a little bit more. So I'll go back and I'll draw, where's the brush? I don't know if you can see this on your screen or not. It's really bright, which is why it's not easy to see. Because basically, when you're using the heel tool, you draw over where you want to correct. So you can see it's pulling up the, the boards here. And then you take this other piece to the area in which you want to correct it with. Sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Just highlight and delete. Okay. Ed Tepper, Fisherman's Retreat. Oh, wow, this looks like a postcard to me. Very nicely done. From a competition point, I think the only thing that I would do is remove these lines right here because really they don't necessarily add to the image. Um, and I think you can do without them. I would possibly even remove this post just to give it a little bit more uh, clarity of the buildings. But I love the color. This little green looks like a child's bucket. I would take that out. Nicely done. Benkot Santosh, Fishing Village in Norway. 
Oh, wow. Another one. I almost feel like the saturation may be a little bit high on this. Um, and maybe it's just the yellow and maybe it actually looks that way as well. Let's see what happens when we take the saturation down just a bit. And again, it's to the maker's taste. These are, are merely suggestions. So this is uh, where I took it. And that was before. So you see where it really tones those yellows down a bit. So you can bring it that way, or you can go, uh, let's see, into the yellow. So I'm in the HSL or HSL and color, and you can select your individual colors here. So I selected yellow and you can go to your saturation there I mean, if you wanted to keep the reds in the, the buildings and whatnot, and there you can bring that saturation of the yellow down. You can see where if I really drive it up to 100% and then bring it down, it's doing essentially the same thing, only it's not affecting anything else in your image. Okay, well done. Edrew Kuda, Flaxen Feathered Finch. There's this nice close up of the bird again. I want that lens. These are awesome. I love it. I don't know that I would change anything um, in this image. Rebecca Perry, 4th of July. I just had a thought before I flip for this um, from a title perspective, uh, looking back because he's looking back. And again, it gives that relationship and that storytelling to the image. Okay, sorry about that. What was the next image? Fourth of July. Initial impact, I love. I question where this light right here is coming from. So you might wanna just take that out. I again feel like your title is, we know that it's necessarily the 4th of July with the fireworks. Um, I'm thinking under something because then you have your play on words and and I think it would be more relatable. I'm concerned about the little bit of noise that you have up in here. So if that's something that you can can take in to Photoshop and and pull out some of that noise. And it's possible that um when this was being edited, that the shadows were lifted too much, which sometimes you'll get more noise. Uh, so you definitely want to be careful of that. Um, and there is some noise down here in the weeds. Um, let's see, and I'm sure I can't run the denoise in here because, yeah, because it's the um, um, JPEG. Let's see. What happens when I bring luminance up? Let's take it all the way up. So if I took it all the way up, particularly here, you see where it got softer. I mean, everything else got softer. Uh, what you can do though, is in Lightroom, it's really cool because you can create a virtual copy and you can take and you can make your corrections in this one with your luminance. And then you can take your original, bring them into Photoshop. Um, actually, if you, um, I'm not gonna pull up my film strip. So if you take your two images and you have them highlighted, right click, go all the way down to the bottom in Lightroom, you can open it in Photoshop as layers. So it would, so the two images would open as one document and then you can mask off um, the areas here 
Um, and then that would be no more noise. Okay. Parks round trees. Generations. I like it. I think it's so important that we capture our youth with our older, older people. This will definitely be a treasure uh, for time to come. The softness of the focus is the only thing that really concerns me. But when it all boils down to having the image or not, I think it's important that you have the image. Okay. Ed Tepper. In a place long ago. I love the black and white of this. I just, I want the scene in my backyard where I can do all of my high school senior photos and light painting and, and all kinds of things. So whoever has this available to them, you're very fortunate. I love the image. It's, um, it's well done. John Schickler, in the rain. And John, one other note, I would just check this area right here because as I scanned across, it um, it looked like it was being lost in the shadows there. And without doing a masking, I'm just going to pull shadows and see what you get. Um, you've got information there, so it might be something to look at. Okay. And the next one again, please. In the rain. Wow. To be that close. Okay, I'm going to check my screen to make sure. So on initial impact, you definitely have it there. As I sit and look at it, I do see um, what appears to be cut out. So you have all of this area right in here. There's a spot here that looks like it was erased. Um, there's some marks here where the erasing is missed. So as impactful as it is, I would definitely revisit it and make some of the corrections um, based on what I pointed out. Uh, and I think, um, I think it'll do even better. Ed Hageman, Indian priest. So I would qualify this as a reportage uh, image, and your title is definitely your storytelling, which is telling you more about this photo. Um, as much as Indian Priest um, tells you what it's about, I question what is he about to say? So you may want to think along those lines too. Sashi Iyer, is it safe to come out now? <laughs> I love the title, especially in today's world. I love the, the, the way that it's framed. I, I think it's a, a great job. I would tone this down just a little bit with a little bit of um, the brush and uh, just bringing those highlights down just a little bit. But that's, um, that's a fun image. Harry Matthews, just, is it safe to come out now? Was that this one? Yeah, somebody asked here asked what the title was. Oh. Okay, the next one is just having a lunch break. Okay, again, to get this close is just amazing. You just want to rub their antlers. They're so soft and, and fuzzy. 
I think I would go, I, I would go more along the lines of a different title um, only because I had to really look for the grass to see what he was eating. I think I would lean more in the direction of, from a title um, point of view, is focusing on the antlers. And let's see, what is he? He's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine point. Um, I would do a play on words as far as um, the points, because he has that look on his face of what's your point. In fact, that could be the title, what's your point? Or um not how many points because that's obvious um i would have the word point in my title just because of of his his rack or rack you could use the word rack um again when you have judges on the panel you have to make sure that they understand what the photo is that they're they're looking at um, I actually had an image judged once and it was a, a hunter in his camouflage gear and, or bow hunter and he was drawing the bow back. And the, the basic comment from the judge was, I'm just not feeling the camo. So it's hard to say, you know, how these judges are going to react. Um, and then, then you start thinking, well, should he have been in a dinner jacket? And then I, you know, I laughed at, at that comment, uh, you know, that I had in my head, but then it, then I thought about it and I thought, well, from a competition point of view, because it was, um, it was a high school senior that I had photographed. And from a competition point of view, if I had had him in the middle of the woods with his dinner jacket on and he was hunting, I could have done a completely different storytelling about how he was hunting for his next meal. And so keep them in mind things like that when you're you're picking out your images um, for competition of what's the storytelling? Are the judges going to know what I'm trying to say? And is there a way that I could put a different spin on it and even make it a more interesting story? And so many times I've told that story about the, well, I'm just not feeling the camo. And I need to get my little hunter um, person that, you know, my, my high school senior back out with his bow and arrow and put him in a, in a dinner jacket. And because that could be something that, that really is, is different. Um, and if I see a bunch of, of um, hunters with dinner jackets, I'll know where they came from. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Next. <laughs> okay. So for, 35th image will be Kalia on Libby Hill. Okay. Really a nice portrait. I love how it's in, in nice sharp focus. I am distracted about the background here and what appears to be a railing. Um, I would probably um, take those out and the title really, even though um, it looks like it's going downhill, which would suggest a hill. Other than that, the hill doesn't, doesn't really give or aid in the storytelling. Okay. Bill Whitworth, last respects. I like it. I love that it's in the black and white. And often, you know, this this image draws you in with the the moon. Um, I like it. Good job. Kemp Davis. Lighted angles. I like this from a from a commercial point of view. I would go in and just simply clean it, clean up these little areas right here. Let me do a smaller brush. So you can move that around. You can go in 
a little smaller. Let me click off of them. So obviously I did that really quick. I would just clean up those little stain spots there and possibly even just brighten it a little bit. There's an artifact right there. I would probably clean that up. I like it. Jay Denny. Little mill in the snow. Wow, you can feel the temperature there. I'd be interested to see what this looks like in black and white. That's nice too. One of the things that I notice when I do that is I lose the detail right here. And that's something that you may want to consider too when you're looking at your images. It's just simply take them and drag that saturation down because sometimes you'll see things that you hadn't seen before, especially in your highlights. So if I bring those highlights down just a little bit more and maybe even the shadows up just a hair, I'm looking at these shadows in here. Um, let's do a brush. Just bring that to life a little bit more. And even in this area. So there's where I finished. And I'm just going to hit reset. So pay attention to, to these areas right down in here. If you really want to see the difference. I'll hit reset. So it definitely brings out that definition. Okay. Liz Smith, uh, excuse me, Lotus. Oh, wow. That's gorgeous. I would fix this area right there. Boy, that, that is just tack sharp. Beautiful. And I may take care of this one little spot right there, just because. Nicely done. Pat Davis. Meditation. Very nice. I would maybe um, maybe lighten him just a little bit and definitely check on your um, your whether it's level or not. And normally what I'll do is I'll take a line like right here is what I'm looking at to make sure that it's level. If you don't have Lightroom, you can always uh, drag a line in Photoshop and do the same thing. When you're in Photoshop, you basically start at the top and you click down and then you drag it from the ruler and it'll leave a rule or a, a line that you can double check your, um, your horizon line. Okay. Uh, Harold Lana, Mexican sunflower. I love the sharpness in the center. I would bring your details down a little bit as far as your highlights go. Very nice. Dashi Iyer, military through the ages participant. Boy, I bet he has some stories to tell. Be a little cautious on your highlights here on the side. So maybe bring them in just a little, again, with just a brush. Just a little sweep.
just to give you a little more definition. Okay. Tony Johnson, million dollar view. There we go. Wow. Again, you wonder what used to be on those pilings. Nicely done. I I like it. Ben caught Sontosh. Morning light. Interesting. I love the uh, the contrast. I love the concept. I wouldn't change a thing. I'd be interested to see what others' um, opinion on it is. I I really like it. Um, just the um, I'm looking for the word. Um, it's not um, not contrast. I'm sorry, I can't think of the word. Abstract. I love the abstractness of it. It's something that you would not expect to, to initially come up, but yet you know it's there. Cool. Paul Bickford, Morning Reflections. Oh, you just want to sit here and just breathe. Let me make sure I don't have a spot on my screen. Nope, it's right here. We've got one little spot right there that I would take out of this because my eye went to it immediately. And one of the things that you want to be um, cautious of, and I don't see any here, um, is just make sure when you have a clear sky like this that you don't have any sensor dust. Because if you have one little speck of sensor dust, they will ding you on it. Good job. Michael Bryant. <laughs> Mostly cloudy. I'd say. <laughs> Good title. Um, again, this is one I'd be curious to see um, as a as the color image. I would double check my my shadows down here. Let's see what happens when we pull a, a gradient on it. So in your mass tool, you have um, various gradients. And so I would do a linear gradient on this. And you can just pull that up to about right there. And I would just pull those shadows up a little bit. And then you can always go back and mask this off if you wanted that water to still be, be dark. And you would just do that by doing the brush and um, masking it off that way. I like it, cool shot. Also, Michael Bryant. Moop. What was it again? Oh, the, the upcoming one is move over. Oh, move over, okay. More hawks. I don't think, which, I wonder, I love birds and so I'm, I'm looking and I'm like, which kind of hawk is this? This is not a red tail. So I'm not sure. Someone will have to tell me afterwards what type of hawk this is. Um, what concerns me from a judge's point of view would be the lack of detail or the lack of sharpness here. Um, and as much as it's an awesome image, I think you would get dinged on that. So you may want to just focus on this image uh, by bringing it in here by bringing it in with a crop. You may end up having a stronger image that way versus the other, um, just because of the lack of clarity right there, okay? Or if you have another one that you could take this one out and put the sharper image in, there's your there's your image. Okay. Ed Hageman. 
mutual, I'm sure. Interesting. This is really cool. And again, when you have these abstract images come up, it's something that that the judges are not necessarily looking for. So it gives them pause. And when you give the judges reason to pause and, and look at it a little bit deeper, um, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. And, and in this case, I think it's a good thing. Interesting. I like it. Perry Matthews, Nature's Flourish. Oh, this is really nice. Very pretty. I think it's beautiful. It's framed nicely. And yep, I like the key light, sorry. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm going around the image and, and I'm, I'm liking everything about it. Ann Fulcher. Need a mouthwash. <laughs> Again, great title. Uh, great capture. Poor dragonfly. I would take this one little stem out. And from a presentation point of view, uh, definitely give yourself more of a border. Uh, when you go edge to edge with these, um, I've, I've seen more not do well than, than those do well when you don't give more of a matting around it. Nice job. Stero, no fruit for you. <laughs> So my question is, would you be putting this in the reportage category versus um, portrait? And I'm liking the title. That's fun. And you could also go along the lines of, um, instead of him using the, you know, the thought process of the storytelling, instead of him using the knife, he's using his teeth. Um, no need for a knife or or something along along those lines. Okay. Heidi Nunnally, old man of Crater Lake. Cool image. I like it. I like the framing, the composition. You can see your shadows in your, your details back here. You might wanna check again that horizon line. Yep, it needs to be lifted up just a little bit. So this is where I put it and you'll see the difference when I hit reset. And now you can't unsee it. So you definitely, and I am the worst. I have to tell you as far as even though I have the grid in my camera, I get these images back and I'm like, did I just lean sideways? I, I am always um, having to fix the horizon in my images. And it's just, it's, it's one of my flaws. And when you, um, when you start to really pay attention to it, you really see it. I try to fix it in camera, but I still, nice image. Perry Troxel. Paradise Island. Wow, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And of course, you you've uh, you've heard enough of me by now. As far as I wonder if there's any detail down there in those shadows. So it kills me. I have to look a little bit. Let's see what happens when we do this. And sometimes it's just not there, but it's always fun to just kind of look. Let's take the shadows. Is there anything hidden? Uh, not really. It just pulls up that under edge a little bit. How about exposure? No, that's when you lose it. And that's what I was talking about too. When you, um, 
If you notice this blue over here, when I'm pulling that up, you get all kinds of noise. So you definitely want to be careful. Um, sometimes it's better to leave things in the shadows than you don't see the noise. But we're going to put that back. Okay, good job. I love this image. Ann Fulcher. Playful love. Let me make sure I can advance. I'm still. Okay. Again, another fun image. I like it. And then I'm drawn to the child with the cell phone. It's interestingly done. Again, I, I really like the image. Um, my mind goes to, would there be another title that would tie her in? Because everyone else is engaged with each other, except for her. And how would you have her stand out a little bit more? Something to think about. Okay, I like it. Jerry Posano, River Rock. Again, another interesting image. It makes me wonder and, and question what's going on here. So I would maybe look at, at having a different title um, because there's no rock there. So in, in using that in your title, it, it causes me to have question. Um, so I would, I would think about that. Maybe um, something along the, the lines of, of a city relaxation or um, you know, bringing the recreation to the city, not that title, but something along those lines of the, the storytelling. Now, if this was an event that was actually, that had rock in the title, I can certainly understand why you would choose that title. And then again, having the judges understand what that title means, um, you know, we, um, a lot of times when we, we name these, we know what's going on in the image, but we have to make sure that the person that sees it for the first time does or understands it as well. Okay. Michael Orr. And the event was called River Rock. Okay. I, and, and I figured as much, and, and that makes perfect sense to me uh, when I go in and I really decipher it. And of course, now that I, I look a little closer, it looks like there's a sign that actually says that. Um, again, it's, it's one of those things where when the judges are looking at them, they need to have the whole story right there in that title. So you don't wanna leave anything for question. Rocking the night away. Okay. On initial impact, I love it. It's a great image. I notice that the microphone is in focus, but really the artisan is not. So I would caution, and you can see the things that are on the plane of that microphone from his strap to right around in here, straight up is in focus, and then this gets a little fuzzy. Uh, so I would just be cautious of that. This is cut off here, and that could be something that, that you could be dinged on. Uh, so maybe pulling back a little bit um, may have, have made it a little bit better for you. And maybe even instead of that side angle, more of a front on angle um, for this shot. And, and sometimes we're not able to get in the, the location because there's a bunch of people down front. And, and so it makes it a little bit harder. But when you, when you are photographing someone straight on versus from an angle, your compression is going to be completely different and your chances of everything being in focus is going to be greater versus at an angle. Okay. John Schickler, rush hour. Oh, wow. Okay. So I understand 
um, the the rush hour for sure. Um, I would caution, and I know there's a, a title for it where you have your selective color. That may even be the title. Um, it's one of those things that's been overdone um, for so long. And you'll notice, especially in competitions, that people will watch a competition and they'll see a bunch of one particular technique. And that, so then the next competition, you see a lot of that same technique again. And selective color is, is one of those things. And when the judges start to see a lot of that, then they get tired of it. And so it's, you want it to be something that's different. Um, overall, the, the full impact of the image, I think is fantastic. I probably wouldn't do the selective cover or a coloring just for the reasons that I explained. Marianne Barnhart, Scenic Alaska. This is a fantastic image. I would give it a different title. I would tie that train and that storytelling into, um, into the story, something like Around the Bend or um, What's Up Ahead, um, just something along those lines. I, lo I love the image though, you have no no block shadows, no blown out highlights. It's very pleasing. It's interesting where you're, you're leading lines of that train coming in. I would change the title and give it more of a storytelling atmosphere. Carol Annis, Skyway Railroad. Again, the, the same thing as far as all of your, your shadows and, and highlights look really good. Um, sky's not blown out. You've definitely got definition in, in the, um, the clouds. Um, yeah, I like it. Martin Evans, Serrano Glacier. Wow, that's beautiful. I do feel like you're losing a little bit here up in this area. So the whole trick with the, the uh, masking of the brush tool, I'm curious what it would do for you. I'm just gonna come into this area here and just pull down the highlights just a bit to give it a little bit more definition and sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does. You see what happens when I blow it out. Highlights may not be what you wanna do. You may even wanna play with shadows and just deepen the shadows there and that'll change the definition as well. Or even the exposure, not the exposure. But you see with just playing with the little sliders, it'll definitely um, give you a variance, but I love this, it's beautiful. Harry Troxel. Singing in the rain. Oh, I'm stuck in the mask. Let's get out of the way. Oops. How precious. I love the, um, how the, the selective focus is done. Definitely brings your attention um, to your subject. Um, you may want to be cautious with um, over usage of flash um, because you can definitely tell that it is a flash image, um, but it's definitely a, a cute image, one that, that any grandparent or parent would love. Rebecca Perry, Spearfish Pass. Again, a great black and white. Just makes you want to be there. Good job. Mark Bess. String Lake Milky Way. 
Oh, wow. Nicely done. I feel as though there's some over sharpening up in this area here. So definitely be cautious of that. And there's noise. And if they're going to, to ding you on anything, that would be it. Um, if I didn't know better, <clears throat> I would say that it was possibly an underexposed image and it was brightened. And when you do that, that's when you get a lot of that extra noise in there. Well done, though. Philip Schneider. Summer sharing. Bees just make me smile. Did you know bees sleep? I just learned that recently. They, um, they sleep in your flowers at night. So if you go out and you just look under the petals, you can see little bees and they're sleeping. So a friend of mine just shared that with me the other day. Um, I would be cautious on how bright the, uh, the side is here. Sometimes when you, um, when you do images like this, if you simply take a reflector outside with you and you have an assistant hold the reflector for you, you're going to eliminate a lot of this extra blown out area there. Um, I love the sharpness that's right in here and all up in here. And I'm thinking this is pollen on their legs, which is absolutely amazing when they do that. Okay. Linda Fern Schmiel, summer shoving. <laughs> This is fun. A friend of mine um, does this, and and she is uh, she's a beast. This is um, this is a lot of hardcore fun here, and I would imagine it's um, in the reportage category. Well done. Also, Linda Fern Schmiel. Sunset roost. Silhouettes are always heartwarming. This one is no different. I would fix this area right here because it distracts me. And it looks like he has a hole in his heart right there. So I, I would go in and fix whatever that is right in that area of this bird on the right. Let me make sure there's nothing on my screen. Yep, that was a speck on my screen. Other than that, nice capture. Parks Roundtree. Take your daughter to work day. Wow. I love the title. Love the image. Yeah, good job. Susan Van Manen, the basis. It's a really cool capture. <clears throat> I fear that since it's intended to be a black and white, the blue here is going to distract from, um, from the judges and, and, their, um, and they're looking at the image as a whole. Um, I would probably do a little sh um, sharpening up in here because this is definitely sharper uh, than what his face is, if you can pull that out. Okay. Jerry Posano, the gang's all here. fun image and how cool to be able to get so close to them I love the gang is all here but from a storytelling point of view I also look down at this guy and I have to wonder now why'd they kick him off the edge so you could certainly go with that type of a theme of off the edge or um Nobody wants to play with me. Um, something along those lines is is definitely going to pull into your storytelling. Good job. Educuda. Sorry for interrupting. I just noticed I would probably because this right here, you're kind of losing them. So if you come in like this and then take this bird out that crop and fix this area right here 
that may that crop may tell you your story a little bit more so. Okay, sorry. Edricuda. The little clown. Hmm. Cute. So initial impact is great until I get right up under his neck. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, so you definitely want to work on fixing that. Um, eyes are eyes and nose and mouth are extremely sharp, but then you you get into where it's muddied right here. So I would be really careful of that because I can see where the the judges would talk about that. Okay. Joe Ring, trail side. Very nice. Again, I would probably just remove that. If you weren't able to remove it um, before you took the photo, I would um, take it out in post. Um, almost looks like this is not in focus right there. So you wanna be careful of that, okay? Susan Kennedy. Train number seven. That's a really cool capture. And of course, with seeing the seven on each one of them, and yet on the blocks, they're not, it's like, why are all the trains number seven? So I would maybe, um, Again, story tell on that of um, everyone wants to be seven or I don't know. I would, I would do a play on words there as well as to explain in the storytelling why, why they all have seven on them. Seven on your side. That's a, tell, that's a news station around here. Well, actually in D.C., not around here. I'm about 50 miles from D.C. Okay. Leo Vainberg. Uh, Trumpet Lily. Very pretty. Initial impact is, it's very pretty. Then you start to notice the artifacts that are here and here and here. You've got a lot of noise. So someone could could simply say, was your lens dirty? Or is it noise? Is it a photo that was scanned and it possibly has dust on it? Uh, just the minor details that you really want to be aware of. Okay. Susan Kennedy. Where'd Papa go? Cute. I like the title and, and the image is, is really simplistic, which is sometimes some of the best ones that you see. Okay. Paul Bickford, windswept. Cool title, cool photo. If you're able to, I would probably take this building out just because again, it's a distraction. And I would double check the horizon on this one. I think that made a difference. And maybe it's because of the tree that it's giving you the implied. Raise that up. I would just double check horizons. That's a really cool shot. Aaron Davis, Wyoming Expanse. Beautiful. I would maybe pull this up just a little bit from a crop point of view. Because this area right down in the bottom 
is really not not adding to your image. And then when you look at it, it just it pulls you right in versus so this is where the crop is versus this one. There's that. I'll do it one more time for you. And then there. Okay. Mark Best. Yellow warbler stare down. I love it. You see that other eye there, which is, is something that, that the judges will look at. I love this image. I love how the lines come in and across. Great crop. Good job. Cindy Walker. You can try. Again, from the reportage point of view, great title, great framing. I like it. Ling Whitworth, Yukon, Emerald Lake. This is a beautiful area. Beautiful location, beautiful shot. I think it's over sharpened. Um, from what I can see here, it's just there's super duper detail beyond what it would really need to be. So if you're able to pull that sharpening back, especially like down in the water. It's just, it's crisp, crisp and too crisp for me personally. Um, so I would switch that. Um, let's see what happens if we just take it just on the clarity level and bring it down a little bit and bring the shadows up, maybe a little bit more in the exposure. And there's something going up here. There's some sort of a, a hazing and you have a halo on that. Let's make sure it's not because of what I did. No, you still have a little bit of halo and then up in this area too. So I would, and that could have been from sharpening. And I don't know for a fact that it was sharpened. It just looks like it was, okay. Leo Vainberg, Zen. Oh, wow. Well, you just want to pull up a chair and have a seat there. I think it might be just, and I look at lines, and I think this is off by just a hair. There's where I straightened it, and as it was before. I love this image. I love the softness of it. It doesn't need to be super crisp to be effective. Um, like I say, I just want to pull up a chair and have a seat there. Okay. Marianne Barnhart. And that's our last image. I say, I think that's our last image. So I will stop sharing unless I need to go back and look at images. I see we've got some um, comments in the chat. I don't know if anyone has any questions. I'm happy to answer. Carol, this is Karen again. Um, any questions from our in-person audience? Oh, we have, we have lights. I think, I think Sarah said it very well. Yeah, um, Vincat's comment was uh, very enjoyable, spot on comment. Really appreciate, um, Carol, what you've uh, shared with us. And uh, Michael, be prepared for some title changes. <laughs> <laughs> you know that if I haven't learned anything, that is really important um, is the um, is the titles because these images have to talk for you. You can't explain. Um, you know, like, for example, I was just looking at the, the comments where the lighthouse was called Old Baldy. Your judges don't know that. And so you really need to be able to, to let them know 
or they have to kind of figure it out and they get seconds to evaluate these images. And so you want to make sure that that they're speaking for themselves. Yeah, definitely great points. We've we've had discussions quite frequently around here about titles and and the need to tell the story. I think that that was really just a great point that you illustrated. Um, one comment I wanted to make, um, Carol referred to reportage um, several times. We don't actually have that category for our end of year, but anything she mentioned as reportage would probably translate into our pictorial category. So it's kind of our catch-all storytelling sort of category. And PSA simply just calls it, and BPPA, you know, they call it something different with that reportage. So for those of you who heard that word, um, think pictorial for our end of year competition. And Carol, I think you can see the comments. Um, I think what was very different about your evaluation than most, um, one is you actually had access to showing us the changes and that's very difficult to do. Um, that helped a lot and Good. put it in perspective. And you also speak on a level for everybody. So for all of us who use Lightroom, there were some things there that I didn't even think of that I could use and I know how to use. So mm -hmm. um, I hope to be able to ask you, and I want you to think about it down the road, um, if you're interested in maybe teaching us a class on Lightroom. Absolutely, absolutely. I do a class on Lightroom. I have one on Photoshop as well. Um, I can drop my contact information in the, the chat if you want. That would be uh, wonderful. Okay, awesome. Um, and uh, we'll share it in the newsletter uh, next month as well. And Carol, you were going to send me a little ad. We'll put Carol's ad in our newsletter so you'll be oh, able to get yes, in touch with her. I can do that. Uh, this yeah, week, send this, that. This week has been, uh, it's been full and fun and trying at the same time. Um, I lost a cousin this week, so... Uh, and it was unexpected. So when that happens, everything gets pushed over to the, the back burner and you take care of your, your immediate needs at hand. And, and so, um, you know, at first when it, when it happened, I'm like, when are the arrangements? Because either I, I can be there or I can't. And fortunately it wasn't tonight. And I was, cause I was not going to miss with you guys, uh, just you. because I knew that we had planned it so far in advance. So it, it worked out. Um, awesome. but you know, you think of all those things when, but I definitely need to get that ad to you. And I appreciate that. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so again, thanks to Susan Reed, our uh, membership director for introducing us to Carol and Carol, thank you for being here as a token of our appreciation. Um, you'll be hearing from Susan with a membership certificate. We'd like to offer you our honorary membership um, oh. through the rest of, of the year and then next year. And, you know, you can keep in touch with what's going on around here. Absolutely. We'd love to have you back. So thank, so thank you. you. And, and uh, then there will be a check in the mail at some point. Awesome. <laughs> Let me, All right. let me key in real quick, um, just my, if nothing else, my um, Facebook, actually, you know what I have? Let me just copy and paste. Um, let me copy and paste this real quick for you. And Cindy, if you can get me all that information also, as we're planning for this upcoming year, we will uh, start to plan a few classes that will be live and, or Zoom and We'll go ahead and get Carol in there. Is there still time for a quick question? Absolutely. So for those of us that are um, old timers, highly experienced in, uh, but have not dabbled in Photoshop or Lightroom. So we do everything right out of the camera. Um, you have any advice or just the advice is learn Lightroom and Photoshop. So one of the things that, that I do teach is a beginner's Photoshop class. So I do the beginner's Photoshop. I have a 101 tips and tricks in Photoshop, which turns out to be about 300 and some. Susan can tell you, Susan has come to that class, um, which is how we had um, met through a mutual friend. Um, and then the Lightroom, um, I have not done any um, online classes for the, the Lightroom that you can go and access yet, but those are forthcoming. Um, I always do private mentorship as well. Um, the biggest thing is just to start. 
and not be afraid of trying things. Like I say, with those sliders, just get in there and, and really move them from right to left to the extreme and see what it's doing for you. Um, a lot of times I call it just-in-time learning. So if you know that you have a project that you're working on and you need specific help with that project, we can certainly help you with that as well. And Michael, I, I'm going to also add that some of our meetups are specifically from different camera distributors that will deal only with um, older cameras and will tell you how to work with film or how to work with the menus in your camera. And it's if you've done it the old time way, as my father says, there's nothing wrong with it. You could still do the same thing because you were able to do it in a light room a long time ago, in a dark room rather, not a light room. Right. Um, so if you if you're intimidated by it, give it a try. If you want to learn how to use the inside of your camera for something different, there are lots of um, webinars and activities that can show you how to do that. And if you send me an email, I will connect you with that. Okay. Thank you. I am. Well, I think as that. as Carol um, indicated tonight, I mean, you could see the power of some of those post processing tools. I mean, Lightroom. I started out hating Lightroom, and you know, after going to a class, um, which you know, just one day class, I was able to at least start manipulating things. And the more you use it, the better you get at it, and you can make some powerful changes to those images. So, worth a try. Well, Here's and the masking, the masking tool alone is a huge game changer. I, yeah. I, I used to spend very little time in Lightroom and then jump over to, over to Photoshop and do all my other edits there. And now I can do a lot of, of what needs to be done in Lightroom because of the new masking tool. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. What version of Lightroom were you using? Uh, whatever the latest is. Um, 2023, I think is what it is. The classic? I think it's a classic. Hang on just a second and I'll tell you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Lightroom Classic. And typically I use um, Photoshop 2023. Um, and right now they do have the beta out. If you've had the opportunity to test it, that is just crazy. Some of the AI stuff that you can do in it. However, it, it's also very primitive from an AI point of view. Um, in comparison to some of the other AI, uh, like mid journey and that sort of thing. Um, it'll do some really fantastic things, but it, it's like early AI a year ago. Um, so Photoshop definitely needs to catch up in some cases. And in some cases it can take, um, I literally had my grandson in an outfield with a chain link fence behind him. And then there were cars behind the chain link fence. And I circled the cars and said, remove car. And it was my grandson, the chain link fence and the field behind him, no cars. And I would have never been able to do that. Well, I mean, I could have, but it would take me hours. So I would have never done it, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it did it in seconds. So the, the technology is here and it's not going away. Um, the best thing is to learn how to use it. All right. Well, thanks again, Carol. Thanks You're everyone welcome. for being here. And we will hopefully see you next month, second Tuesday, and we'll have our last image evaluation. Um, Henry Stint, I believe, is our evaluator next month. Um, so again, it'll be another virtual evaluation. Henry lives somewhere out in the western part of the state, I think. So, so he'll no, join us virtually, but get those photos ready. I think that's on minimalism, right? Yes, I'm sorry. And there is an assigned subject. Thanks, Marianne. Um, minimalism, minimalist photography. So go Google it, get some ideas. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff out there. This is Terry. I turned the uh, website on. So the this evaluation should be up there. The photos. I haven't had a chance to prove that I got all the labels correct yet, but I will. And I'm going to stop the recording and say thank right. you to everybody online. We had 29 people online tonight. So oh, thank cool. you all for being here. And um, again, Carrie, you could read the uh, chat and the comments. You did a fantastic job. And from online, we thank you.
Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.